Hi guys, this is the second book for my read alouds. Um, Nikayla was the only one who voted and she voted for Horrible Harry and the Ant Invasion, so that's what I'll be reading next. And then after we finish with this one, I will read The Magic School Bus, The Truth About Bats. So every time I start a new book, I like to read the back because that gives a synopsis which is like a summary, and it tells us what's going to happen in the book so I can start thinking about it. So the synopsis says, Live ants are coming to room 2B, and Harry gets to take care of them when they arrive. As Ant Monitor, he'll be helping the teacher transfer all of the ants to their new home in the classroom where everyone can watch them. But Har Harry's horrible ideas keep getting him into trouble. So what if he happened to put the ants right on top of Mrs. Faxworth's container of yogurt? Fortunately, when a few of the ants manage to escape, Horrible Harry knows exactly what to do. But then, a very sad accident occurs in the classroom fish tank, and Harry feels horrible, even though it's not his fault. As Room 2B finds out, some ideas can be too horrible. I also find it interesting sometimes to read the dedication page of a book, which is where the author tells you why they wrote the book. So this dedication says, from my class who launched the original ant invasion at Southwest School, which tells me that Susie Klein, the author, used to be a teacher. And the list of names here were her students. And that's where she got the idea to write this story. So let's find out what kinds of things Horrible Harry gets into. Horrible Harry and the Ant Invasion. When Harry and I walked into room 2B, we couldn't believe our eyes. Look at that, I said. Wow, what is it, Doug? Harry asked me. It's an ant city. Ants, Harry grinned. Then he rubbed his hands together. Harry loves anything that crawls, slithers, or slides. He loves slimy things, hairy things, and creepy things. Harry loves anything horrible. The ants haven't arrived yet, Miss Mackle said, but they should come any day now in the mail. The mail? Sydney made a face. ew -wee. There's going to be ants in Miss Mackle's mailbox. Harry flashed his white teeth. Neato, he said. Are we going to have an ant monitor? Miss Mackle looked at the list of jobs on the monitor chart. We're going to need one. Would you be interested, Harry? Harry smiled so wide, his silver filling showed in the back. Miss Mackle printed Harry's name next to ant monitor. One week later, when the class was lined up in the hall by the office, Miss Mackle checked her mailbox. She found a small manila envelope in it. When she opened it up, she pulled out a plastic vial, which is like a little tube. There were lots of black hairy things moving around in it. The ants, the class shouted. The school secretary, Mrs. Foxworth, poked her head around the corner. Ants, she replied. We're going to observe their behavior, Miss Mackle said. Mrs. Foxworth tried to smile, but she was shaking so much the pencil that was sitting on her ear dropped to the floor. Harry picked it up and handed it to her. Are you afraid of ants? Miss Mackle ran back to her typewriter. Harry grinned. She's afraid of ants. Well, Miss Mackle said, the directions on this small package say to put the vial in a refrigerator for 10 minutes so the ants will go to sleep. It's easier to put sleeping ants in the ant city. Harry stepped forward. I'm the ant monitor. I'll take it to the teacher's refrigerator for you. Miss Mackle raised her eyebrows. Can I pick an assistant? Harry asked. Miss Mackle nodded as she looked at the waving hands. I pick Doug, Harry said. I beamed. Miss Mackle looked relieved. When we walked down the hall to the teacher's room with the vial of ants, we opened the refrigerator and we looked for a place to set the vial. Gee, I said, there's so much diet soda in here, it's hard to find room. 
There's Miss Mackle with the vial of ants. Harry finally set the vial on top of a container of banana yogurt. Then we walked back down the hall. Mrs. Foxworth was coming toward us. Hello, boys, she said in a cheery voice. Taking your morning break, Harry asked. Mrs. Foxworth nodded. Thought I would have a little banana yogurt. Harry and I stopped. We looked at each other. Mrs. Foxworth closed the teacher's room door. Then we heard it. A shrill scream! Ah! Harry and I walked back to room 2B, laughing. Ten minutes later, Miss Mackle brought the vial of ants back to the classroom. Everyone gathered around the science table. I think I should do this, boys and girls, Miss Mackle said. Some ants bite. I don't want any of you to touch one. Is that clear? Everyone nodded their heads. Miss Mackle took the roof off an ant house. Then she took the cap off the vial. We all watched her pour the ants into their small opening. Their bodies look like raisins, Ida said. That's the way they sleep, Ida, all rolled up. Miss Mackle replied. Ew, Sydney groaned. They're gross. The teacher looked at Sydney. We are scientists. We are observing ant behavior. Someday, someone in room 2B may be a great scientist and make great discoveries in a lab. Harry and I pointed to each other. We were planning to be great scientists. Someday. Just as Miss Mackle finished pouring the sleeping ants into the hole, the ants at the bottom of the vial started to wake up. Goodness, Miss Mackle exclaimed. Sydney screamed when three ants crawled out of the vial onto the science table. Miss Mackle stood up. No one move or touch anything. I will get the ants. One's on the floor, Mary called. Miss Mackle crawled after it. She put a pencil in front of the runaway ant. It crawled up the eraser. Miss Mackle popped the ant into the opening of the ant house and then put the roof back on. Two ants are missing, she said. Her hair was in her eyes and one of her high heels was off. They're gonna get us, Sydney shouted. Sydney, Miss Mackle said with her teeth clenched, we must remain calm. Harry stood in front of the teacher. As your ant monitor, I will find the missing ants. Then he gave her a salute. Just don't touch the ants, Miss Mackle insisted. Harry took out his lunchbox. He unwrapped his sandwich and scraped some peanut butter onto his finger. Then he put his finger under the science table and waited. Miss Mackle put her shoe back on and pushed her hair out of her face. I think everyone should return to their desks now. I found them, Harry shouted from under the table. Everyone bent down and looked, including Miss Mackle. There were the two runaway ants on Harry's finger. Miss Mackle grabbed her pencil and quickly scraped them off and then dropped them into the opening of the ant city. Harry flashed a big smile. I told you I'd find them. Miss Mackle frowned. I told you not to touch the ants. Look at your finger. Everyone looked. There were two red marks. He got bit, Mary exclaimed. I think you should go to the nurse, Miss Mackle said, and when you come back, you'll see another name on the monitor chart next to Ant Monitor. Harry put his head down as he walked to the nurse's office. So that's about halfway through chapter one, because it's a really long chapter. Um, so I will do the next part of chapter one in the next few days. So look for the questions that go with part one. I will see you next time.